Welcome to the Energy Medicine Summit, where you'll discover how to take your health into your own hands from today's top energy medicine experts and healers. Share this event with your friends and family, and come join us on Facebook at The Shift Network. And now your host, Chris Ferraro. Welcome back to the 2020 Energy Medicine and Healing Summit from the one and only Shift Network. I am Chris Ferraro and one of your hosts. I'm an energy coach and an author, and I have this incredible job where I get to meet with the most amazing energy workers, healers, scientists, shaman from all over the world and get to interview them so that they get to share some of their gifts, their knowledge and wisdom with you. And I am very, very excited about our topic today, which is how to channel and why. So channeling has long been misunderstood, often mislabeled by skeptics and in actuality, it's just the art of communing with divine energy and our expert here says it's one of the greatest tools available for self-transformation. So he's going to share some of his journey, demystify the process of channeling while examining both the multidimensional and then the more grounded practical effects channeling can have on an individual. Let me tell you a little bit more about him. Lee Harris is the CEO of Lee Harris Energy. He reaches hundreds of thousands of people around the world every month with his empowering videos, online courses, audio recordings, and live events, where he teaches practical guidance for navigating daily life with clarity and optimism. Welcome, Lee. Hi, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. It's so wonderful to connect with you because you're, you're someone who feels familiar to me, although you don't know me at all. I've seen your face. I've listened to your videos. You've been in my sphere for quite some time. And here I get to connect one-on-one -on -one with you. And what I was sharing with you prior to our starting the recording was, you know, there is such a, a lot of misunderstanding about channeling. And I'm, I'm somebody who likes to study biographies of all different kinds of people because I'm looking for the threads of, of human experience that runs through all of our stories and of people, of, you know, people that are famous and people that are infamous and everybody in yeah. between. And so often you will hear uh, you know, people that are not considered necessarily spiritual talk about getting downloads, getting waking up with an inspiration and suddenly writing a brilliant piece of music or doing an incredible piece of art. As an artist myself, there are times when, when something simply flows through into my work and afterwards I go, I don't even know how I did that. So I don't think that there's... Um, you know, anything scary about it, but for some people there is. So can you talk with us about why people um, are afraid of channeling? I love biographies too. I'm, I'm with you there. Um, you know, I, I think you kind of nailed it when you talked about how it's so prevalent in our lives. So whether it is a song or whether it's that you're a teacher who constantly has inspired ideas when you're in the flow of being a teacher in your classroom and you feel a way to present something to one of your students that, that really works. And perhaps when you reflect on it afterwards, that doesn't just feel like it came from past knowledge. So for me, channeling happened through music, funnily enough. Uh, I was 21. And I had been a lifelong lover of music. I had sung as a child, uh, but I never thought I would compose music. And at the age of 21, I suddenly started hearing these fully formed songs with arrangements and melodies and lyrics. And, and, and often the song would just be there within like five minutes. I could just hear this whole song. So I learned to play guitar enough that I could record these songs and somehow get them down. And uh, at the time, it was the most magical experience I had had to date. I was a creative, but because I loved music so much, to suddenly experience this ability to create music that seemingly just came from nowhere for me. It was like one day a door opened. 
um, I, I literally was having a love affair with songwriting. And then about a year and a half later, I heard the voice of my guides. So I will say that when that happened to me, I had as much skepticism as many people do, even though I was avidly into personal development. I loved reading about anything mystic. I loved tarot readings. I was, I was really into all of this stuff. But I think that the fear is very programmed. And there are many things that you can look at in society, reasons why we might fear the idea that we're communing with spirit or we're communing with a higher self or we're communing with an entity or we're communing with the soul. I think number one, religion has for most of us, and I know many people who use religion beautifully to support and enhance their life, but I know many others and we see them out there who are taught through religion separation. So you are the person sitting in the pew, sitting in the church, and the person in the pulpit has a connection to God and you don't. And through this connection to God that is administrated for you by someone else, you are told the rules of how you can commune with God and when you can commune with God. And for many people, it's considered blasphemous that they would even believe they could commune with God. So first of all, you have this, you know, centuries old religious structure that's in our world that we've all kind of been conditioned through. Second of all, it, it definitely goes back to the way that people who have had metaphysical gifts have been persecuted, persecuted or chastised. It really struck me when I first started working with people and I did one-on-one -on -one clients for 14 years. I couldn't believe how many intuitive people I was meeting. And when we would really dig into who they were and why they were here and their purpose, for so many of them, persecution, being burned as a witch, being drowned as a witch, this was in their memory banks. And what I learned about past lives is sometimes we're having a memory of our personal past life. And sometimes we're tapping into a past life, a past history of, of human beings, human history. So often what I've noticed is that for any of us who are about to become more intuitive, we're about to channel, there is this fear of oh, what if it's a bad spirit? What if I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing? And the one that was probably strongest in me at the beginning was how are other people going to think of me? How is this going to impact my life? Are my friends and family going to think I'm weird? Am I going to be ostracized? Because I think at the root of it all, and it, if you look into studies of the way that we're wired as humans, we don't want to be ostracized. It's very important for us to be in the group and of the group. Because again, historically, if you were sent out of the tribe or sent out of the village, it could have meant death. So I think there is a lot of conditioning in our society and many of our cultures on the planet to keep us separate from spirit and for us to have no true unified relationship. And of course, there are many tribes and cultures where they're very at one with spirit and they very much talk about, you know, Native American cultures, just one example of this understanding that if we're here in the human body, we're also a spirit and so are the trees and so is the earth and so is everything around us. So I think that's where the fear of channeling comes from. And then of course, for every different person, it will have its own face. But for me, it was very much, uh oh, what the hell are people going to think of this? You know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to have to come out as a channeler. And in fact, it took me many years to tell my family I was doing it and, and anyone beyond a, a group of close friends, because while what I was experiencing felt like home, I was very aware that because it wasn't normalized in our culture, that it could be something that would be a barrier for me with connecting with some people in my life. I think that you shared something that's really going to open a lot of hearts because many of us that, that enter a spiritual path often have that inclination early in life. So we come into this experience not feeling like everyone else. So there may already be this feeling of being a, a misfit, 
you know, someone who doesn't fit in. Um, and, and somehow we're projecting out that energy and, and people are also noticing we're not exactly like them as well. And so that can bring up those early experiences of feeling isolated, of feeling like the other. And now here is this, this incredible tool that's been looked at with such cynicism because of what we've been taught about separation. And when you started talking about separation and what can happen through, um, through religious teaching and, and, and many other ways, is I thought of trauma, of how trauma is something that leads to a deep belief in separation. Uh, it's where a lot of people feel like they've been abandoned by a higher power, or they may have even um, experienced a separation within their own psyche during that. So there's a lot of reasons, you know, why, why we can feel separate. And so is channeling something that can enable us to feel our oneness, to be in, in connection with the infinite, with the internal, with all that is? Definitely. And I think what you said about trauma is so relevant because one of the things I realized is I personally walked towards personal development and spiritual work for myself to help me clear and recover from some of the traumas that I had experienced as a teenager growing up and just my experience of life. But then when I started working in this field, which wasn't anything I'd ever foreseen or planned, but it just, it kind of happened. I was amazed how many people will go to spirituality or go to metaphysics or go to the intuitive realms as a way of connecting beyond the trauma and connecting beyond the body. So what you will often see is that um, my guides who I channel talk about it as a descension process. So many, I'm sure, will be familiar with the idea of ascension, this idea that we can, and again, that can have many meanings, but I'm speaking about you as Chris or me as Lee can learn to ascend who we are. So upshift our energy, our personality, our soul, let it all fuse together to have a brighter, more connected experience of life than the one that we were having. And I think channeling really can rocket you into those realms. But the descension process is what tends to happen when you have had a big awakening, whether that's come through channeling or some other spiritual experience that opened you up to the universe. There is this extraordinary expansion that can happen and channeling definitely invokes that. But the real key I've realized with channeling is what happens when you come back down. So for anyone who's tuned in, who's ever been to a workshop, you know, we call it the workshop high and the workshop crash. You know, you go to this three day event and you're like, oh my God, that was amazing. And you like come home, you want to tell everybody about it and you feel like you're on a high for a few days or a week or a few weeks or months. And then there can be this period where you kind of hit the ground again. And sometimes there's this belief, oh my God, this is the hangover. What went wrong? I was feeling so alive. But we're always moving as a soul. We're always going up and down the levels of our soul in our human life. So sometimes you're in a very challenging period as a human being. Maybe it's the year you get divorced and you lose things and you have a lot of conflict with your friends. And sometimes the tendency is to think, God, what am I off my spiritual path? What's happening? And often those are the biggest spiritual growth times. So it looks like descension in those moments. But what you're actually getting to do is kind of rewire all this new energy that you brought in from above into your existing life. So I find that people who channel regularly um, or who have a regular metaphysical practice, the highs and the lows don't tend to last beyond that first couple of initiatory years. There might be big moments, there might be a big workshop or a big channeling or a big healing session, you're like, wow, I had like an awakening moment, but you tend to regulate after a while. So regarding the trauma, I think the interesting thing that channeling I see does for people is the more you start to channel, the more you're inviting your trauma to lighten up. And so the experience of listening to channeling or channeling for yourself can feel very euphoric and light. 
But what then happens after is you bring that light, that space, that expansion into your existing state of being. And it starts to just gently move some of that trauma, some of that, if you like, some of the parts that you've held in your energy field that you can open up and bring new space or new light into. And I think for sure, I mean, if we just look at 2020, one of the things that my guides, the Z's have been saying for many years is they've said that 2017 to 2024 was going to be a, a rocket ship of a period in history in terms of people waking up. And 2020 for sure has been the biggest year for people to really get in touch with who they are at a new level. And I think that's why more people are beginning to have channeled experiences, whether they are channeling in the, in the way I do it, or whether they're just becoming more intuitive or more emotional to things in their life. You can't not experience this rise of consciousness that's happening on the planet right now. Sometimes it's uncomfortable, but you can't not experience it. That has certainly been true for me. Um, once news of COVID hit here in the U.S. in March, I went into a, a four to five week supernatural experience that was unlike anything that I had ever had before. And it wasn't something that I tr asked for or tried to obtain. It was something that was um, unearthed or turned on within me. And it was really one of the most profound experiences I've ever had that lasted the longest of anything that I've ever experienced. So I knew for sure that what was happening in the, the practical third dimensional reality was happening for some really profound reasons. And I was called into deeper service than I ever have before. Um, and I felt more connected and felt that experience of oneness more deeply than ever before. And I will say that I do know people that are do not consider themselves to be spiritual that I find them even in everyday conversations bringing up exactly what you just shared right those intuitive downloads those intuitive hits and at the very least people are are searching for meaning and purpose within their experience and and that is a a very um, necessary hero's journey for all of us to move through so I really appreciate your per perspectives on that. And so, you know, you've mentioned in channeling um, entities and guides and beings. Is there a difference between talking to something that feels outside of ourselves and communing with our own soul or our higher self? It's, it's a great question. And, you know, I have, a, I have a, a certain philosophy on this, which is the value of channeling is you experiencing your higher self or a higher self. So I heard the voice of my guides when I was 22. I wasn't looking for it. Again, I had some skepticism. I, I believed other people could do it, but I, I didn't believe it would happen to me. There were other things I would have loved to have happened to me, but this was not something I was, I was looking for. Now, when I asked them, you know, are you just my higher self or are you my guides? They explained, they said, no, no, we're a group of 88 beings, but we then extend wider into source. And what they explained was we're very form based as human beings. You know, we, you look like Chris, I look like Lee, we can touch our faces. We have a name, we have personalities, we have things in our life that are very form based, but they explained that the more you go into the energetic realms, form becomes less dense and less of a block. So what they were trying to convey to me is they said, yes, we're a group of 88, but we can go beyond our group of 88 to get more information to funnel down to you. And they said, and that's what you're all doing as human beings. So Chris, you could argue right now that you and I are slightly channeling each other. And then beyond you and I, we're having a channeled experience with everyone who is tuned in on this broadcast, because even though we are pre-recording this, we're right now in the future because we've tapped into when this is going out. And so we will be connecting with everyone who is experiencing this broadcast. So how I'm showing up right now as Lee and how you're showing up as Chris to people that know us, it might look kind of familiar to who we are most of the time, 
but we are definitely under the influence of everyone who's tuning in right now. So to some degree, we are channeling them and they are channeling us. And that's kind of what they explained to me. And it made a lot of sense that energy is more amorphous and more informing everything on the planet all of the time. But to come back to your question, I always encourage people not to go hunting for their guides or not to hunt for speaking to a being from another planet or an angel. Now, sure, if that's really important to you and you know what you want to channel and where you want to go, by all means, go for it. But if it isn't working or if you're trying hard to make something happen, I would ask you, and I'd like to invite everybody to do this with me in a moment, to come back to yourself and say, I just want to speak to the voice of my soul. Because that's easy, and all of us can do that. And the reason that we'll know it's the voice of our soul that we're in contact with is the words and the feeling that we get from the voice of our soul will be a little different to how we experience our everyday voice. Doesn't mean that over time you might not become more the voice of your soul. I mean, for sure, my working with the Z's for 22 years, I call my guides the Z's because they, they gave me three names that all began with Z. The three people I was speaking to at the beginning, Zachary, Zachariah, and Zayadora. So over the years, the people who listened to the guides spoke, spoke of them as the Z's. When I speak to them, they, they change my energy field. They change my frequency. Something happens. I can feel there's a difference. But for sure, over the years, I have become a bit more their viewpoint and their energy than I ever was 22 years ago. So if everybody would like to try this, we can actually have a moment where you speak to the voice of your soul. And it will just take us a couple of minutes. And all anybody watching will need is either a pen and paper or pencil, or if you prefer to write on a screen to pull up a document on whatever device you would like to type on. But we'll take a couple of minutes and uh, we will do a brief channeling exercise if that's good with you, Chris. I will enjoy doing this along with you. Fantastic. Okay. So I've done this in workshop rooms all over the world, sometimes with very big numbers in the room. And whenever I announce we're about to do it, there's always a portion of the room <laughs> that kind of go, Oh God, oh, I didn't think I was going to have to do this. I thought you were going to do it and I was going to listen. I've never seen anybody not be able to do it before. And I'm not saying that to put pressure on you. What I'm trying to get across is when you write these words, it would be very easy for you to stop the flow of the words because you're like, I don't know, am I making this up? You're always making it up because if you are committing an act, if you are deciding to type something, for me to channel disease, I have to make it happen. It's not that I'm making up their words, but I am participating in allowing this action to happen. And so some part of you is involved because you're willing it to happen. But the reason and we'll talk about this in a minute. The reason to just let the words come through is that when you just let the words come through, something comes through that's different. And in a moment, I'll tell you how you can interpret it. But for now, we're going to take two minutes. We're going to play you some music. And with your pen and paper at the ready or with your document at the ready, I want you to just write this title at the top of the page. What does my soul want to tell me today. What does my soul want to tell me today? And then you can say, I choose to allow my soul to speak to me from the highest light and then start writing whatever it is that you hear or feel. I choose to allow my soul to speak to me from the highest light. Try not to think about it. If you're paused, just start writing whatever comes through without judging it, without reading it. Just write.
take about 30 more seconds. Okay, so we're going to draw this to a close now. You can always do it again later, and I highly recommend doing this regularly. It's very good for you. It just connects you with the voice of your soul. But Chris, maybe we could speak to you about how this experience was for you. You can be our, our, our group spokesperson. <laughs> um, uh, I immediately felt all of this love in my heart. So I felt energy moving through my heart space. Um, and yet the, the voice started very firm. It was relax already, exclamation point. <laughs> so that got my attention. I was like, oh, I better pay attention. And then it, it, it just gave me um, such a deep message of love. You know, do you know you are held in love always? That you are as precious as anything ever was or will be that you are loved in every way anyone has ever been loved. It's already here. Let go and trust more deeply than ever before. We are doing what we came here to do. Mm -hmm. And so that really spoke to me of um, sometimes the feeling of the hustle that as a, a self-employed person and as someone who's juggling a lot of projects right now, um, I can get into that busyness of all of that and get disconnected from being in the flow of, of trust. Um, so I feel very moved by this message, very moved mm. by it. That's beautiful. And, and I, I can put my hand up too, as someone who, you know, is doing many things at once you can, you can get into that very doing state, but it's amazing how this is a reset. So this is actually one of my self care tools. And what I love about it is it, it takes two minutes. You know, you can just write yourself a message for two minutes. Now, the big question is, will you? <laughs> you know, it's like sometimes we forget or we're like, oh, I'll do it later. Or, and I think sometimes the resistance we have is, is letting that very love you described in. I'll share with you a, a very quick story about uh, one of the wonderful people that I work with when I was still doing one-on-one -on -one sessions. One of the things she came to me for, among others, was she said, I would love to learn to channel. And I was like, sure, no problem. So I think, I think we had a, a five session mentoring block. So I knew we had some time and that I could guide her through the process. Now, she was an amazing woman, brilliant businesswoman, very successful, um, but wanting to shift some things in her, in her personal life that were a little off for her. She came back to me on the second week and I said, oh, how did it go? How did the channeling go? Because I'd set her a task to do it every other day for like five minutes. She said, oh, oh it, was all, it was all right. And I was like, oh, okay, well, did it not, did it not, did it, were the messages not? And she went, no, no, it was, I mean, it was fine. She, but it didn't really tell me anything. And I was like, okay, well, do you mind sharing some of it? And so not unlike you, although you're seasoned to this, so you're used to it. She was like, well, it was things like, Jill, you're lovely. Jill, you're great. Jill, you know, you're doing incredible things in the world. And I said, okay, well, how often do you speak to yourself that way? She was kind of like, mm, well, I, I'm very busy. I haven't got time to speak to myself that way. And I went, ah, okay. And then we've got all these things in your personal life that are feeling off emotionally. You've got this incredible success with your business and you love your work but you came to me because you feel off emotionally. And so we're looking at healing some of that to bring you more wholeness. And here, this voice of your soul is calibrating you to love before it will give you the useful information that your business brain thinks it, it needs. And she was like, what do you mean? I said, well, you're looking for grand epiphanies about Jupiter or life and the universe and everything. And she went, yeah, well, that's what I want from channeling. And I said, okay. But channeling is always going to come to you with a certain vibration of love, even if 
like you just said, Chris, sometimes it's tough love. Like one of the reasons I believed my channeling was it didn't just stroke my ego. It would tell me when I was off base, it would be like, no, no, this is your problem, not your friends. And here's why. And then they would explain to me when I asked them a question, because I would do a lot of questions like what's going on in this relationship? What do I need to learn over here? Why is this not working? And the answers they would give me would be phenomenal and very interesting. So I think once you've calibrated your frequency to the love that channeling has to hold, because it's not going to have the same judgment, comparison, competition energy that is running here on the planet. It's, gonna, it's, not, it's free of so much of that stuff. And if ever your messages that you channel are critical, are nasty to you, there's a couple of things going on. Very, very rarely I have heard of people who say that they're experiencing very negative energies. And that's a, that's a common fear, but it's so rare I've ever truly met any of those cases. Other times it's that the person has so much self-criticism and self-doubt running that they can't get beyond it. And it really exposes to them that they need to do some work on self-love so that they can let the voice of their soul through more. So calibrating you to love is what the channeling is going to do. So if the first, let's say you've enjoyed doing this, you who's watching, if you tried this, say three times a week, just for five minutes, and maybe put it in your calendar, whether your calendar's on your phone or you use a paper calendar, maybe timetable this or think of a good time of day for you to do this. Just five minutes, that's all you need to allow, but that you commit to trying this at least three times a week. If you do this for three to four weeks, you'll be amazed at how things will start to change, not just in your outer world, but first in the way you feel about yourself, about the world, and about what's possible. So channeling really helps us reconnect our own soul, the voice of our own soul. And it's a voice that our current society is just beginning to welcome back in at a bigger level than before. But there are many parts of our society and our conditioning that are not welcoming that voice in. So it is something we have to cultivate and practice for ourselves. It sounds like there's two things or maybe way more than two things happening at the same time with channeling from what you're saying. There's the information itself, right, that's coming through. And then there's some recalibration, some changes that are happening within us that we may not even be conscious or aware of, but that's um, sort of giving us boosts or giving us upgrades or giving us healings. You mentioned earlier in this conversation about the, the gentle healing of traumas, right? So it sounds like there's uh, different things happening and, you know, our left brain logic minds can get um, sort of attached to what the message is. And I, I love the story that you shared from this client that you know, because we can really complicate things. And sometimes really life yeah. can be much more simple than it is. And so we get a simple message and we like, ah, that's not anything, right? But <laughs> that's exactly what she needed to hear. So are there any risks to channeling, any risks to the physical body, to the mental body, emotional body that you're aware of or anything that people should be aware of? I'd love to just address what you said because it was brilliantly put, Chris. One of the things that my guides have said many times, whether live in the room or you know during workshops that we've run online, is don't worry if your mind drifts when you're listening to channeling. So, you know, I do these every month. I record a channeled message that's usually 45 minutes long and it has sound healing with it. And we, we put it out through my website and it goes into my members community, the portal. And they always say, don't worry if you drift off because the frequency is, is its own thing. So the frequency that channeling brings through elevates you. So for some people, every word will be so important in a channel because it will help open or unlock your own mind, your own perception. Every word will be so important. And then for someone who was lying next to them in the room or someone in our portal community, I can't tell you how many times I have heard, God, every time I turn on one of Lee and the Z's recordings, I fall asleep. 
and I wake up just as it's ending. And I always feel like I've had a massage or something, but I'm really annoyed because I've, I've missed the message. And it's not that that happens for everybody or that that happens every time, but I hear it so much. So definitely the frequency is one thing and the information is another. And, and both coexist quite beautifully, but you can actually separate the two. Regarding the body, it's interesting. This is not something I'm an expert at. So if, if anybody has any concerns about whether or not channeling can be, can be bad for you or there's something going on for you, I advise you to look around out there to see if there's any more in-depth information about it for people who have experienced those things. Now, I'm a very practical person who I kind of have one foot on the ground and one arm in the sky. That's kind of how I'm composed. But I have to have my foot back on the ground. I'm not somebody who wants to live out in other dimensions for months at a time. And I've met people who do that. I've had friends who do that, but that's not really my composition. So for me, channeling is something I always want to ground. So if I do a big channeled session for myself or for other people, I then have to ground for a while. And I tend to like to do it for about an hour, an hour and 15. And then I like to stop because for me, what happens, um, even though I feel very much like I've had a, a, like a healing session after I've channeled for an hour, my body gets hotter. You know, I, I, get, I, I, my, my body temperature increases. And so there is an energy. It's a little bit like running a certain electrical energy through you. And I have always felt that it's not something I would want to do intensely too much of the time. So even though I do it regularly through the month, I'm really only channeling, you know, for, for my community, maybe two or three times in a month. It's not something that I would like to be doing too often. However, at the beginning, I did it a lot more because I was kind of learning my stamina. So I think what's really most important to understand is every channeler is different and everybody is different. So as you start to do this channeling practice, just notice what's happening to you physically. It's really important to drink lots more water when you're channeling, especially if you do long sessions, or if you're listening to channeling, remember that your energy is shifting and your frequency is, is, is shifting. And that's very much like going for a Reiki session. So there is no hard and fast answer for what the channeling will do to each different person, but it's very important to understand that while it may seem like you just sat there and wrote some words or spoke some words, something quite big is going on energetically. So to start to observe and notice what your body needs and wants around channeling. But honestly, for like five minute soul, soul voice sessions, you won't tend to notice too much. I'm, I'm more speaking about if you channel for a long period of time and you're recording it and you're letting voice, the voice come through you, um, or if you're somebody who is doing it for a living for other people, then I think you need to, you need to treat it with respect and treat your body with respect and just pay attention to what's going on. Lee, thank you so much for, for really bringing us into the experience of channeling, demystifying it, making it practical, and also making it very grounded. Uh, I love that we finished with a message of, for people to listen to their own bodies, how important it is for all of us to be doing that on a regular basis. So can you share with our audience how they can learn more about you? You've mentioned your community and anything else you have going on. Yeah, so I, I would I would say that probably the um, the the thing I'm the, that I'm most known for at the moment is um, something called an energy update. And every month I produce this free video on YouTube. It's called an energy update, and I speak from this place, you know, a more grounded energy intuitive space. And I speak to some of the themes that are going to show up that the Z's give me, that what's coming up this coming month, what might be showing up energetically, emotionally, psychologically, how to deal with it. They're about 25, 30 minutes long, and they're usually a good dose of information. And we give written bullet points of the themes. So you can find that at my website, leeharrisenergy.com or my YouTube channel, Lee Harris Energy. Um, we have my monthly community, The Portal, um, which you can check out um, at my website. Lots of tools for sensitives and awake souls for thriving during these very interesting times. Um, I have a weekly podcast where I interview change makers, healers. That's called Impact the World. Again, you can find that through my website. 
And um, I also produce music, which always has a spiritual theme and a sound healing base. So um, we have a, a music album coming out on November the 20th called Awaken. So depending on when this airs, it may already be on Spotify and all the usual channels. And uh, I have a, a website for my music, which is leeharrismusic.com. Thank you so much for, for being with us and, and sharing your sweet, loving, and, and yet very grounded and earthy um, presence. I really do appreciate it. And for all of our listeners and viewers, this is a recording. You can rewind and do this practice again and spend more time with Lee. And if you know someone out there who may be struggling, who needs something to get back in touch with themselves, let them know. Let them know about the summit. Let them know that these practices are available. Uh, you know, even that skeptic friend of yours who thinks that you're into all this weird stuff and has never been into it, you'd be surprised. People's minds are opening. So this is a good time to reach out to people in a gentle way and, and invite them into all of the incredible healing practices that we're exploring during this summit. I am wishing you all beautifully balanced energy and many blessings from myself, Chris Ferraro, from Don Dean, from everyone at Shift. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for joining us for the Energy Medicine Summit, brought to you by the Shift Network. To learn more, visit energymedicinesummit.com. To join our global community of people awakening to their divine humanity and taking inspired action, visit theshiftnetwork.com. Thank you again for gathering with us and for sharing this healing path with your friends and family.